Looks like Rockstar are getting us primed for next week's Los Santos Mercenaries DLC in GTA Online by reminding us about one of the most loathed DLCs in Grand Theft Auto Online history. This doesn't bode well, but okay. Hi and welcome back, my name's Dan and I'm an old grumpy gamer. So in this week's updates we have double money for the Criminal Enterprises DLC with ULP. So nowhere near as good as last week's double money agency event, but still a bit of fun and a great way to waste some ammo. Fortunately, the mission series can be done completely solo and there's no barrier to entry. You don't need to own any facilities or specialist vehicles, you can just jump straight in. That said, I do recommend an armored vehicle. My favorites, the Karuma or the Tampa, but if you don't have a lot of cash, then grab a Duke of Death from Warstock for free. Right, for this guide, let's assume it's been a while since you've worked with ULP, so we'll go over each mission. Head over to the U, which is on the upper level of the road at the base of the IAA stairs, and walk into the yellow marker to start. Fill your weapons and purchase armor, you'll need it. Hit confirm settings, and now if you're doing this solo, you'll need to be on the ball here, and quickly set the matchmaking to closed. After that, tab down to play, set your outfit, and set yourself as ready to play. Once a mission has started, you'll get another quick cutscene, and then you'll be dropped back into the world. Now you're provided with a brand new Greenwood, one of the DLC's new cars, but you can also use your personal vehicle. I'm using my custom Greenwood here, but you could just as easily use an armored Karuma, a Night Shark, or an Insurgent if you have one. Jump in and follow the GPS marker. Head over, enter the building, and make your way up the stairs. Then into the bedroom, over to the computer. Keep an eye on the top left of your screen for the prompts to start hacking. Next, click my computer, external device, then solve the puzzle. After that, you can exit the apartment and don't worry, you won't meet any resistance. When you drops back into the world, you'll have two new markers. Head over to marker A first because that'll be the hardest. Along the way, agent ULP will tell you to collect a maintenance outfit. Once that marker pops up, head to the construction site to grab it and you'll find it on the floor of the main site office near the the entrance to the construction site. So change clothes, again keep an eye on the top left for button prompts, then head back to the IAA building set at marker A. Head through the lobby and up the elevator. You'll pop out in the lobby of the IAA building and we'll need to find two devices. Now you can sneak around and will likely be able to get through this without alerting anyone if you're good. I am not good. So fight your way through the building, uh, you'll find one of the items in the boardroom in the main loop and the other next to some shelves in an office near the back, or at least I did on this run through. Fight your way back out, enter your car, and then get the heck out of Dodge. Once you're clear, set a map marker to the B site and make your way over. And when you arrive, sweep the building for two fuse boxes. In this case, there was one on the side of the building under the shelter, and another in a cheeky spot over the front awning. And I was able to get up using a ladder on the side of the building. Once they're disarmed, head around to the main roller door and head in. You'll have a flashlight ready to go. Go, and won't meet any resistance here either. We're after two more doodads this time around. Just methodically work your way around the warehouse until you find them. And once you've got the hardware, head back out. You'll see yet another marker on the map. And don't worry too much about the cops, FIB or IAA at the moment. If they're on you, just start driving. Once you get close, if you're still being tailed, you'll be asked to lose the cops. After that, you won't receive any more resistance. You can just drop the goods off at your contacts. And that's the end of the mission. And once you drop back into free mode you'll receive another call from agent ULP giving you a bit more information and prompting you to start the next mission. Next up, counterintelligence. Once you've jumped into the mission, set a GPS marker to any of the drone locations and head on over. Once you get close, open your phone and go to the SecuroServe app bottom right. Then stay in range of the drones while the hack is taking place. After that, drive to the next marker and do it again. Once all of the drones are done, hold tight for a second then another marker will pop up. Head on over when you're ready. Now you can just pull straight straight up here, you won't be ambushed, it's all good. Once you're in, head over to the laptop and fire it up. Again, you'll see a prompt on the top left. You'll get a quick cutscene, then you'll wake up in the back of a van with a bomb to defuse. Again, follow the prompt top left to activate the diffuser, and keep an eye on the controls bottom right for how to use the actual hack tool. What we want to do here is spin these nodes and use the mirrors to ping and destroy the blue doodads while avoiding the red doodads. Very side 
scientific, of course. Note the time up the top too. You have a fair bit of it, so don't panic. Take a moment to look over the puzzle and work out the best route. Once the bomb has been diffused, jump out of the van and run around to the front. Jump in, set your view mode if you're not a fan of first person, and then head off. You'll see a new marker on your map again. Just make your way over to that one. Don't worry about the cops just yet. After a bit more of a briefing, you'll be asked to lose the cops. And once that's done, you're more or less out of danger. You can just drop off the goods to your contacts and that's the end of the mission. Once you've dropped back into free mode, you'll receive another call from Agent ULP, giving you a bit more information and prompting you to start the next mission. So back to the marker for extraction. Once a mission started, you'll be dropped straight into the world and ULP will be in your ear with a briefing. At the same time, a new marker will appear on your map. Just head on over. Now this one's tucked away a bit, but you won't see any enemies here. So you can wander straight in. Once you're in the garage, you'll be prompted to look for clues. Just jump in the car and drive it out of the garage. And you should see a bunch of new markers pop up. Now, you can stay in this car if you want, or you can jump bank into your personal vehicle. It makes no difference to the story or the mission. Next, bring up the map and pick the closest marker. As you get close, head into the search area and you'll hear the occasional audio prompt if you're in the right place. You'll likely meet some resistance here, so be ready. Remember, cover is your friend. Now, I lucked out on this run and found our target on the first one. Grab the target and jump back in your car and get rolling back to the city. Don't worry about the cops for now. You'll hear a bit of an exchange between the target and our contract, then be prompted to take the target to a local hospital. When you're getting close to the hossie, you'll be prompted to lose the cops if they're still on you. And once that's done, we're more or less out of danger. You can just drop the undercover operative off at the local A&E and we're good to go. And once you've been dropped back into free mode, you'll receive another call for Agent ULP, giving you a bit more information and prompting you to start the next mission. Over to the marker again for asset seizure. And once the mission started, you'll be dropped straight into the world and ULP will be in your ear with a briefing. Once that's complete, hold tight for a minute. A new search area will appear on the map first. Then we'll have a bit more info from ULP and finally five new red markers will appear showing the location of some jamming towers. And now we can get rolling. So every tower has two approaches. You can go in hard and loud, which is certainly a method, but it's messy and can often lead to the loss of your limited lives. If you're good at combat though, this can be a lot of fun. The other approach is using a lookout or some kind of vantage point to KO the jamming towers from a distance, which is a method I recommend wherever possible. Also, regardless of your approach, once you ping a tower, they're onto you. So heading up to tower A, we can see the location of the tower is on a building next to a hill in Vinewood. So let's go around to a property behind the hill. And now we have a clean line of sight. We can use a grenade, RPG, or just shoot the damn thing. Either or. Now, as you're heading to tower B, you'll be tailed by a chopper. Honestly, I wouldn't even worry about it at this point. Unless you're using a Faggio, just keep moving. Once you arrive near the second marker, have a look around. You should spot a high-rise car park across the way. Head in and then up to the fourth floor. Jump out. Take care of the chopper if they're nearby, remembering to target the pilot if you can or the tail rotor if they're not available. And next, grab your sniper rifle if you've bought one and scope across the roof to the next building. With any luck, you'll be able to spot the jammer from your location, in addition to be able to take out the limited resistance that might be surrounding it. Once you've spotted the jammer, grab your heavy automatic and take it out. And unless you're sporting E-rounds on your sniper, don't even bother with it. It will take too long. Just use the auto. After that, set a marker to jammer C and get rolling. As you're getting close, head up the highway overpass and jump out. Take care of any choppers if they're about, then any guards that you spot. After that, move a little further up and you should be able to get a pretty clean line on that signal jammer. Hit it with the auto again, then jump in your car and set a marker for the penultimate jammer. For this one, we want to head to the roof of the block of shops across the road. You can use the dumpster to get up. Take out any choppers and then any guards that you spot. Break out your sniper rifle and scope the jammer. And once you've spotted it, hit it with the auto. Finally, set a marker for the last jammer. Now, if I'm honest, I had trouble finding a vantage point with a clear line to the jammer itself. So in this case, we're using a ladder to climb the set of shops across the road, but only to thin out the enemy. Once you've done that, make sure you have full armor and grab out that shoddy. Then head to the blue corona at the base of the tower. Head up the stairs and light up the mercs. After you've cleared them, find the jammer and take it out. Now, do not stand too close. As you head back down the stairs, a new marker will appear for the van. Make your way over to that one, bearing in mind that it's on the move, so you will need to account for that if you're using a map marker. Take out the driver and commandeer the van. And now the fun part. The van is, well, <laughs> a van. And if you've ever done a biker business delivery in a post-op van, you know precisely what I mean. This ain't no rumpo. This thing is slow, which makes it really 
easy for the mercs to catch you. So after much trial and error and several attempts, the best strat I found was to attempt to take out the mercs as they approached, and if they got behind me, to swerve around a bit. And if you're able to hit some of the traffic while they're behind you, even better. If a merc gets up alongside you, it is not good. You won't be able to get a line on the driver. And if that happens, you need to get out of the van fast. Then grab an automatic and take out the enemies. Don't be tempted to hit them with explosives or to light up their vehicles. It will take the van with it. Now, if you're not quick enough to get out when this happens, you will be done. So be quick with it. Do not think you can save it. This part of the mission will take a while, so be patient. Now, once you get close to your end location, the mercs will ease off, at which point we're more or less out of danger. You can just drop the van off with your contacts and we're good. Once you've been dropped back into free mode, you'll receive another call from Agent ULP, giving you a bit more information and prompting you to start the next mission. On to the penultimate mission, Operation Paper Trail. Once the mission started, you'll be dropped straight into the world and ULP will be in your ear with a briefing. Now, while this is happening, you can start making your way to the Mile High construction site. Once the IA agent has finished banging on, you'll be prompted to drive to the front of the construction site. After a few moments, you'll be dropped into the camera for the drones with your controls at the bottom right of the screen. Do a full 360 with the camera, then move on to the next drone, and this will help you clock the guards. Once you toggle through the third and final drone, you'll see the primary target and the agent will get back into your ear. You'll exit the drone view and be dropped back into the world. Now, there's a few strats you can use here, but I typically run the policy of kill everything that moves. So that's what we're doing. So the trick here, if you've not done this type of mission before, is to keep a close eye on the cones of visions for the guards and in this mission on the drones too. You want to try and get as far as you can without detection. So we'll start with the fella next to the guardhouse, then the ones over on the truck and after that let's pop back around and take care of the next lot being sure to keep an eye on that drone. Once you've taken care of them grab the key card for the elevator and make your way up. Take care of the guards again and if you've been discovered hit the drone too. A single shot normally does it. Up the elevator again edge your way around and take care of as many guards as you can without moving too much. Keep an eye out for quiet guards hiding behind some pillars. Once you think you've cleared everywhere, head up the right hand side of the site floor and take out any stragglers. Then make your way up the ramps here. But don't go all the way to the top just yet. Enemies won't engage until you move up, so it gives you an opportunity for a quick pot shot or two. The dugger will take off and you'll be prompted to follow. It sounds urgent, but it really, really isn't. Wait for a bit, take out the remaining mercs on the rooftop and then fill up your ammo armor and health. Once you're organized, grab one of the chutes, get a beat on the location of your car and take a dive off. Do not open your parachute too early though, that'll give the mercs a light on you and you will not be able to do much about it. Once you hit the deck, get in your car and get moving. Now, similar to before, if you've got the right car, you should be able to outdrive the enemies, but if any get in front of you, do your best to take them out in advance. Don't worry about the choppers firing you at this point either. So as we approach Mason Duggar's hideout, we're going to do a bit of a sneak. Instead of heading straight up, we're going to head to the roof on the building across the street. That's the brown stucco thing that's for rent. Head around to the side of the building where you'll find a ladder up, then up the stairs, another ladder, and that should put you on the rooftop. Use your sniper rifle to take out the drone along with anyone you can spot. Then make your way to the roof access thingo and climb up it. That'll give you a better vantage and you can thin out the enemy a little more. Now, I'm not sure what happened, but at some point while I was on this roof, Mason got sorted by friendly fire, taking the win though. Once you're confident that you can't peg anymore, head back down and around the side of the reddish building that our target's hiding on. You'll meet some resistance here too, so be prepared. Head down the path and around to the stairs. Watch out for clowns hiding at the top of the outside stairs. Then head up the stairwell. Before you pop your head up to the top, grab out your Molotovs. Poke your nose out and lob a couple of Molotov cocktails over the vents and then take a breath. After the fire's done its work, make sure you have full armor and health and are sporting a heavy auto. Then make your way up the big ladder. Once you get to the top, stay put for a moment. You'll likely see a fair bit of movement. I found taking the clowns on the left first was helpful in preventing being flanked. Pop any remaining mercs and molotovs aren't super effective here but they still do the job if you feel like it. Now once you think you've cleared everyone do another full sweep. The NPCs in this DLC are a little bit clever and will hide silently then jump you. Be sure you've gotten everyone before you relax. Grab the briefcase next then head back down the ladder. Be careful here too remember you don't have a parachute equipped. Back down the stairs then back to your car. Again watching for enemies that will engage you. As soon as you're back in the car, you'll spot a new marker on your GPS and just start heading in that direction. Same as before, if you've got the right car, you should be able to outdrive the enemies. But if any get in front of you, do your absolute best to take them out in advance. And unless it becomes
becomes really desperate, don't worry about the choppers firing either. Once you get close to your end location, the mercs will ease off, at which point we're more or less out of danger. You can just drop the package off with your contacts and we're good. And on to the final mission, cleanup. And we're going to get really frisky with the explosives here. And once the mission is started, you'll be dropped straight into the world and ULP will be in your ear with a briefing. While this is happening, you can start making your way to the construction site and you'll see a helicopter icon on the map as a prompt. Once the IAA agent has finished banging on, jump in the chopper and head to the silo on the top of Mount Chiliad. Land the chopper and head on in. You won't meet any resistance at this point, so you can genuinely relax. You'll be given a flashlight if you don't already have one. We're looking at a first run through here, so we're using a torch on a weapon for safety. You'll get some audio prompts about restoring power and you'll see a new marker on the map. So make your way through at your leisure. Once you reach the control room, go through to the power grid in the back and follow the prompts to turn on the power, which of course won't work. Next, you'll be prompted to find some fuses. Turn around and make your way down the hallway. Keep a close eye on the minimap as you move through. When you get close to a fuse, a green dot will appear, and this is more or less the only clue we get for the location of the four different fuses. There's no immediate threats at the moment, so you can relax. Now, while you're making your way through, you'll occasionally hear breathing, which is why we needed that good audio. This is the facility's semi-automated defences. The juggernauts are massive tanky boys and they will absolutely rinse your health when they're active. The great thing is they're not and we're going to use that against them. If you hear one of those fellas breathing, casually wander up to them and drop three sticky bombs on them. You heard that right, three bombs. Get clear and then light them up. They will not activate. It will not alert the others and it will not fire up the automated defences. So absolutely take all of them down. Everyone we eliminate now we don't have to deal with later. Make your way down the hall and grab the first fuse. I missed it here first time around but came back a bit later. As you come out to the warehouse, again, take out any juggernauts that you see and work your way around the perimeter. You should find the remaining three fuses in here. Head back up the hallway to the power room, head to the breaker box and follow the prompts on screen to add the fuses back in individually. And with the lights back on, everything becomes just a bit easier. Oh, and don't worry about the juggernauts either, they're still inactive. Make your way to the server room by following the yellow marker. Being sure to take out any idle enemies as you hear them. Oh, and a quick tip too. As you're making your way through the security office, you'll hear some juggernauts through the doors here. There's a bit of a bug that means you can throw stickies or proximity mines at them and you'll kill them through the doors. Once you're through the security office, you'll pop out in the main atrium. Now, don't listen to the agent. We're still on a seek and destroy mission for those idle enemies. Use the audio prompts of them breathing to track down every one you can and take them out. And if you run out of stickies, you can use grenades pipe bombs, proximity mines, kind of whatever you have to hand. Also, you can refill your inventory by going to the interaction menu. That's M on your keyboard, double squares on your Xbox controller, or swipe on your PlayStation, then down to inventory, ammo, and across to throwables. When you're confident you've got every idle enemy you can, make sure you have full armor and health, then head over to a green dot and follow the prompts to start shutting down the system. After the first one is done, our friendly IAA agent will pipe up about something going sideways. Mm -hmm. You know, color me surprised. Now, if we've swept the area properly, we should be clear for a moment. So move to the second green dot. And this is where the fun begins. After a few moments, you'll see some enemies pop up on the map. Run around so you can get a line on the enemies. Don't worry, they don't move fast. Grab some cover and do not get caught in the line of fire. They will absolutely rinse your armor and health. Take out the juggernauts, either with grenades or a lot of headshots. If you have Mark II weapons with E rounds or hollow points, now is the time to use them. Grenade launchers and and rockets work well if you're a high enough rank too. Once you've cleared the enemies, move to the other nodes and proceed with the hack and shutdown. Once you clear the last one, a few more enemies will appear. It's more or less the same game. Make sure you have armor and health, find good cover, and then peg them with headshots or explosives. When you're making your way around the atrium, be sure not to break cover at the wrong time either. Or Anyway, make your way towards the yellow dot, but before you head through the doors, grab some cover and pop the doors. Another enemy may have spawned in the security office. Take them down, then head down the hall where we should encounter one more. Cover plus headshots for this one. Down the hall and there may be another one in the control room, so be careful not to get jumped here. And that should be about the last of them. Head to the dot and into the elevator, where we'll get a quick loading screen. The moment you have control, grab out a homing launcher. You'll see a chopper. Take it out along 
along with any of its friends. This is armoured so we can't peg the pilot or the tail rotor. Our only option here is explosives. As soon as you get a break, head for the busted old jump ramp opposite the silo entrance and jump. Now I'm not flash with free falling and I have limited lives here so I've pulled the chute straight away. If you're braver or good with free fall stunting, have at it. Make your way down the valley and try to ditch yourself as close to the car as you can. You'll meet even more resistance here and the same rules apply. Try to outdrive them but if you can't, ping them while they're ahead of you. Once you get close to your end location the mercs will ease off at which point you're more or less out of danger. You can drop the car off with your contacts and we're good. And once you've been dropped back into free mode you'll receive another call from agent ELP giving you a bit more information and advising the missions series is done. And with that you should have collected roughly 360,000 in total. That's around 60 grand per mission for hopefully an hour's work or so. Not great money if you're a grinder but pretty good if you're a noob. So thanks for watching. Stay safe, wash your hands and we'll see you in the next video.